Hello, Seas Artist! I've missed you, so I thought I would come on here and share with you a little art activity that we could do together. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about an artist first and get inspired by their work and then um, see what we can create from it. The first artist we're going to learn about is my personal favorite. It's my husband, Mike Whiting. He's a public artist. <laughs> Duck, duck, raven. Oh, this is a teddy bear, little teddy bear. But we are looking at it earlier. I think if you turn it upside down, you could be like a little rabbit with bunny feet standing up. What do you like better, teddy bear or rabbit? I don't know. I think if it, if it was pink, it'd be a good rabbit. Okay, what's that one over there? That That is a rabbit and it is pink. So, I mean, you, yeah, you can see the similarities. To make a rabbit, all you need is what? Two kind of ears sticking up and, and now it's a rabbit. Now tell me who you are. Mike Whiting. Okay, what do you do? I'm a public artist. I build sculptures that are based on 80s video games and 60s minimalist sculptures. Little squirrel. His little bushy tail and face. Actually, it would be kind of a dinosaur if you took that apart, wouldn't it? For some reason, I gravitate towards making animals out of squares, which is weird because animals are not metal or square or geometric. There's something about animals that they're so simple and that they lend themselves to that kind of abstraction. Then a rabbit, kind of side profile. His ears and tail, little purple rabbit. Where can we see your work? Um, anywhere except where I live. No, if you go to Albuquerque, the skateboard one we were talking about. Seattle, I've got a couple at skateboard parks up there. One in Kent, kind of by the airport, and then one up just north of Seattle. So did you skateboard at the Kent? I did. You did too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone our age used to skateboard as a kid. Okay, what is this? So this is an eagle. Was, I was looking at like Native American basket weavings, like looking at some of the different things. So that's where I came up with this eagle from. So I'm still trying to figure out how to paint it. It's actually been kind of waiting for me to figure out what color he's supposed to be. If I'm gonna block it out, do different colors or what. One color? I, I haven't decided. The, originally I was thinking maybe like, you know, when you see like an old pickup truck where it's painted, three different colors and it's starting to fade and come back through. Baby. Ant. Mushroom. There's another mushroom. Dog. Puppy. Flowers. Green flash. Have you ever seen this when the sun sets? Flash is green. Like a teeny little speck of green. No? Delivery truck. Car. I want to make one like this of my green Volvo, but life size. I can't decide if I should make it so you can sit in it or not. Cars. I started doing cars recently, which is, it kind of made sense. I don't know why I didn't start there. Because they're made of metal, like cars, and I use automotive paint. This is made of the same thing a car is made out of. But I just kind of simplify it, kind of the way a child would draw a car. Volkswagen color, I think it's called Neptune Blue. It's an old, it's like a little Volkswagen bus. This is a golf cart. <laughs> this is an old one. This is a, it's called Favorite Tea. It's actually one of my favorites. It's called what? Favorite Tea, it's a t-shirt. But it's also like a tea, like a letter T. <laughs> uh, this is a pretzel. But yeah, it's unlike some of the others where it's turned actually 45 degrees. So even though everything's 90 degrees, I kind of cheated and turned it. My neighbor thinks it looks like it's made of cardboard, but it's steel. I have little pretzels. Do you want a little pretzel? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here you go. This one's almost the same color. 
I will keep this and treasure it forever. All right. Yeah, I'm putting in my pocket right now. Uh, California burritos, yeah. Wait, what? Absolutely. What's a California burrito? California burrito is a burrito with french fries and carne asada in it. French fries in it? French fries in it, yeah. You, you've had those. All right, today we are obviously not gonna be using metal or, gr or grinding or welding to make our art, but we are gonna use some simple um, materials that we can find around our house. I need you to go find graph paper, some markers, and Legos, or you can also use wooden blocks. Let's start with drawing on the graph paper. The graph paper, since it's made of squares, will help us to draw whatever it is we wanna draw only using squares. Let's start by drawing a duck. We can draw a simple square for his head and a little square for his beak. Now for the body. Another square and a little square for his tail. Next we can fill in the duck, really using our best coloring skills so we can see our little picture of our duck. Let's try a rabbit. We'll start with his long ear and then his head. Another kind of rectangular square. And then when we go to draw the body, his body kind of overlaps the head a little bit. So we'll draw a rectangle for his body, like he's kind of sitting down. And then a cute little uh, square for his tail. Next, we'll fill in the rabbit using our best coloring skills. All right. How about we draw a squirrel? They're so cute. We'll start again with the head and a little square for his ear. His body is gonna overlap his he head again, just like with the bunny. So we're gonna overlap that. We'll go four squares across, and then we gotta add his little feet. And next we'll do the big bushy tail. And once again, we'll fill in the coloring. All right, what else could we draw? Maybe we would draw a fish. And instead of doing it on the diagonal, we'll go ahead and draw a four by four square and then draw a three by three square overlapping for the tail. And we'll kind of come in, draw his eye. And when we turn it to the side, we can see the fish. How about a flower? A flower can be really simple. We'll start with the petals, with these simple rectangles, the center of the flower, and maybe a stem and a leaf. This one you could even color in with different colors. Once you've filled your paper with drawings, you can start to turn these drawings into sculptures using the Legos. We can use the little uh, uh, squares on the graph to help us figure out what size of Lego we need. So since that one had four across, we can find a Lego that has four points across. The next one has five, so I'll use a three and a two. The next one also has five, so I'll use a two and a three again making sure that I'm overlapping for his tail and his head. Next, we'll get a two on there. And I can't find any more of those in green, so I'm gonna just skip ahead to his ears. And now we have a cute little rabbit. Let's do the squirrel next. We'll start with the bottom of his body, which is four across. And then in order to make this work for the next one, which was five, I had to put um, things together a little bit tricky. All right, next we'll do his big bushy tail. Oh, and we can't forget his little feet. So now we have a cute little bunny and a cute squirrel. And you know how Lego sets come with those big green flat pieces? You could make your own sculpture park by adding some trees, some of the sculptures that you've made, and now you've got your cute sculpture park. I can't wait to see what you've created. You can share with me on Instagram at C's underscore art or email me C's art at gmail.com. Bye-bye.